Hello everyone and welcome to our new section which is called hashing. With this lecture we are starting to learn a brand new topic which is hashing. In this section you will get a deep knowledge about hashing which includes hash functions, collision resolution techniques, hash tables and practical use of hashing. In this first lecture let's see what's hashing. So let's get started. By definition hashing is a method of sorting and indexing data. The idea behind hashing is to allow large amounts of data to be indexed using keys commonly created by formulas. Now let's make clear this definition by using a real example. Let's assume we have three strings and we want to store them in an efficient way. So here we have string of Apple, application and app millers. So if you want to store them using hashing, the first step over here is we are changing these strings into number using some magic function. So here, this is our magic function. So if we use this magic function to convert these strings to number, it's going to be like this. So we are first we are converting Apple word. So it's converted to 18. Then we are converting application. So it's converted to 20. Then we are continuing to convert app millers, which will be 22. So we have converted our strings into numbers. Now you might be interested, how do we convert them? What is the magic function over here and how it works? We will discuss everything in detail later in upcoming lectures. Now you just need to know that this function over here is responsible for converting these strings by using some formulas into numbers. Now the next step is we have to store these numbers in some data structures. Now so if we have an array or Python list which has 24 cells in it, like this, now the next step is by using this number that are generated by this magic function, we will insert these strings in this array over here. So for the first string, which is apple, here we have 18. So we will insert this apple string to the index of 18 in this array over here. Now the next string is application. So when we convert this application to the number, it becomes 20. So we will insert application string to the index of 20. Now, the next word is at millers. So when we convert at millers by using this magic function over here, it becomes 22. So we will insert at millers to the index of 22 to this array over here. Now with this, we have completed converting of these strings to the integers and we are inserting these strings to this array over here. Now let's quickly recap what we have done over here. So here by using magic function, we have converted our strings to the number. And based on these numbers, we have inserted these strings to this array over here. Now here we have inserted these strings using hashing successfully. Now the question is, if we want to read data from this array over here, how we will get access to it? So here again, the logic is same. For example, if we want to access Apple, so the first thing that we are going to do, we will use magic function and convert this Apple to the number. Now, every time we convert the same string, the result will be the same. So we will get 18. So based on index of 18, we can access this element over here. Now we know that accessing an element of array or Python list based on their index takes a one time complexity. So this is how hashing is very important in terms of searching for a given value in the data structure. So by doing so, we can easily identify whether this string is in this array or not. Now you might be interested why we need hashing. So let's say we want to develop an app in which the search operation is used heavily and we want our app to perform as fast as possible. So in this case, we can use hashing. So hashing performs better than any other data structure in terms of search operation. So let's see search operations in the other data structures to understand it very quickly. Now in case of array or Python list, in an ideal condition, search operation will take all again time complexity. In this case, the Python list or array must be sorted one. So similarly, in the case of tree, it takes all again time complexity if the tree is balanced. Because if the tree is balanced, we will either continue to search in right child or the left child. But in the case of linked list, searching operation takes or end time complexity because here we have to traverse through all elements of linked list to find any given value. Now when it comes to hashing, in the best case it takes order of one. So if our hash function performs less collisions, it takes 
or one time complexity. But here you need to take into account that if there are many collisions, this search operation might be order of n. Now to achieve the best performance of search operation, the hash function must have less collisions, which will be discussed in upcoming lectures. But in the ideal condition, it takes O one time complexity. For example, for the case that we discussed now, if we want to access a string using hashing, we will just convert this string to the number and access that cell based on the index that we get from the hash function. Now, this is all for hashing. Now, in the next lecture, we will learn details of hashing in deep. So, see you in the next lecture.